He wrote that book, Can, uh, you know, uh, uh, Chord Chemistry, one of the staples in the, you know, the, the serious musician b book. But anyway, he was, he was a massive influence on me. Again, not so much about the music, but just life in general. Um, you know, my father got me, really got me into the business, who was obviously a big influence. Um, you know, gosh, David Gilmore is probably one of my also biggest gurus because again, I really am one of those people that likes to learn and I learned so much from Dave. I mean, I really have a lot to thank him for uh, because he completely changed my musical thinking and style uh, about being much more melody and less about playing a lot of notes or being hot and playing a lot of licks and fancy stuff because most people don't care about that. And like I said, he's the master of melody. Uh, and uh, so him, and then actually one of the most, this is actually the person, one of the most biggest influences I ever had in my life, which it goes down to the you know top three, is Diana Ross. Oh, my goodness. Right. I love her music. My goodness. Well, she was another one that taught me. I mean, I learned she was such a major influence in my life because I flew back and I worked with her. And she was it was very interesting when I first walked into the sound to the to the rehearsals, she there was so much presence that she had. I couldn't take my eyes off her. Oh my right? goodness. Just, the magnetism was incredible. And I could not figure out what that was. And I remember going onto the bandstand that night, the first night after we did our rehearsals and I made so many mistakes because I couldn't look at the music and watch her. Cause I was constantly watching her to try to figure out <laughs> what she was all about. Cause I was, I I'd worked with a lot of celebrities, right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think anything of it. And then here she comes along and I'm, what is different about this woman than anybody else I ever worked for. Cause she just, owned the room when she walked in the room her presence was so big and so powerful that everybody in the room would just magnetize to it so i ended up after making so many mistakes i went home took the next two days and i memorized the entire book so i knew everything really well because i was in the horn section and that one and i just watched her day in and day out and tried to figure out why every night sixteen thousand people would stand up she could be sick and not feeling good didn't matter she could get everybody out of the and i started looking at all the patterns that she would do after watching it for weeks, I'd start seeing the same things. And so you start learning. I'm, a, I'm big on patterns. I mean, I believe that's the key is you focus on finding people and look at those patterns and you start learning how those things happen through the patterns. So I started watching it and she changed my whole thinking because I, I didn't have long hair at the time, but then I noticed how she was able, how she, the hair, the way she flew it around and how the lights hit it was like, okay, I'm going to grow my hair. Grow my hair. <laughs> the other thing, the other thing was, is that I noticed that, she wasn't necessarily a big dancer, like a, I mean, she moved good and she could dance, but it wasn't like, you know, a JLo or somebody that's out there, you know, dancing right. mm -hmm. and stuff up and down. She was just good mover and she could get everybody in the entire arena on board. And I started seeing things like, I noticed she would find somebody in the first row, first couple of rows she could see real well and mm -hmm. really make heavy eye contact with them. Oh right? my and goodness. She would, she would look at it. And so what happened is she would really connect with that person. That person would be blown away. And then the people around her would be blown away. And she would go through the audience like this. And somebody back in the end, the back of the, you know, the, the, the venue would be holding up a sign and she would recognize, but she'd go around and recognize everybody in the room. And oh then my the goodness. Whole room would, the whole room would come alive. And I thought that was just an incredible thing. And I was able to kind of try that all out and all this stuff works, right? So, and the other thing that was fascinating to me is not because she was a strong dancer and stuff, is that the way she stood and the way she held herself and the way she, you know, when she was just there, it was so appealing. So I remember going back and I, I said, I got a saxophone strap around my neck. This doesn't work. So I, that next day I went to the, the local guitar shop and found a guitar strap that would stretch. And so I ended up putting it around my body in a different way so that I could take and push my saxophone down and, you know, angle my body and how I would angle myself so that it would be appealing. And I learned all these tricks, but these things from a performance point of view were invaluable. And so she really was somebody that woke me up big time to how performance, what it needs, how, how you need to, uh, uh, you know, deal with an audience, right? And how to make it happen for you. So she was monster. And then the la one of the last guys is a guy named Michael Smotherman. And Michael Smotherman is a big time songwriter. And I, I really owe him a lot. We spent a year, uh, one summer writing songs every day called, uh, in a, we started a publishing company called Tuna Day. 
and he's a very major songwriter you know tons and tons of records uh big records he wrote that duet that was on the ray charles bonnie Raitt on that duets album and i mean he, he's a major songwriter but he was the one that taught me really what music is about he was the guy that wouldn't let me think before i played he would force me to play and he would teach me this he taught me this one big one and this this will be my last one then i gotta go because i gotta go to work <laughs> <laughs> the last one is this um I have to go play basically not work uh he one night we were sitting outside it's about four o'clock in the morning we're out there hanging out and he says you know scott he says you know every time you pick your instrument up and by the way this guy when he entered the room and when he sang he owned the room there was no question he had so much power in his voice and the way he commanded audience it was he was my guru right and he taught me about you know this forget about you know he said if it's a little out of tune it just sounds like there's more of you don't worry about it it's about the feel right mm -hmm. so one night we're outside and he says you know scott every time you pick up your saxophone i don't care if you're picking it up just to practice you're playing a bar mitzvah you're gonna play a club down the store he says you know you got to play like you got a big bleep, right? <laughs> a big bleep. He says, you don't big have bleep. Have I one. like that. <laughs> you don't have to have one. You don't have to have You just got to play like you got it. And that stuck with me because every time I go to play, you put it out there like it's, it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Whatever. You just put it out there with every cell of your body and you make sure you deliver. And that has served me really, really well through the years because – when I go play, I just make sure whether I hit wrong notes, right notes, whatever it is, there's conviction to what I play. I play like it's, you know, I'm John Holmes. <laughs> play like you mean it. That's right. So those are my, those are my heroes. And I've got a handful of others, you know, Jeff Beccaro taught me the groove is a delicate thing. And, you know, people say, what was the most fun about playing with Toto? I said, I played cowbell on four songs with Jeff Beccaro. Cowbell. <laughs> I played cowbell. I oh my gosh. I love I it. Yes. I get to look in the master of the grooves eyes and pick up that cowbell and play two and four with him where it would, we would sink that my stick would sink into the cowbell. I wouldn't hit it and we'd be so locked in. It was, you know, better than sex. So he taught me about the groove and made me really live and eat, drink, sleep metronomes. And I had one of the first five drum machines and, you know, so, so those are, those are a little, that's a little overview of my heroes. There you go. That is very nice. Kind of puts bluish or cultish shame in a way when you fear the reaper. So, <laughs> There you go. <laughs> that makes it think of it. Of course, you yeah, have a couple of minutes here. Uh, we know you like to go play. What's the best advice you can give to anybody right now? Um, any anybody? I mean, it's been. Are you talking about artists? Are you talking about? It, it, people, can, okay, it, here's, it can be music. It can be technology. Okay, it can be biggest, what you do. Yes. Here's the biggest one. I'm just telling you. Take that inward journey and figure out who you really are. Because once you figure that one out, everything else happens. That's like I'm saying. It's not about the it's not about the goal. It's about the journey. And when you start to really grasp that by taking a real inward look, I don't care who you are. There's nothing more important than that. And this is not a religious thing. This is just a take a look inside deeply, get into meditation, get into stuff, still yourself down, and really figure out who you are. And if I could tell that to anybody, that's the greatest advice you will know. Because you're going to blink, you're going to be 50, and you're going to blink, you're going to be on your deathbed. So you might as well figure it out before that happens. Because the game of life is this, die before you die. And that means surrender to what is and call it a day. And if I could give anybody any advice, that's more important than learn how to play music, how to build a business, any of that, because then all that other stuff will be more playful. So there you go. <laughs> that is amazing. I think you nailed it on the head. <laughs> Scott, you've been fantastic. Just glad to have you on. Love to have you on again. And tell everybody what your upcoming projects, what's your website, how people yep. can contact you. And, of course, yeah. you can also tell us uh, – what you'll be doing in about three to five years from now. And it's okay to do that. You've been fantastic. Well, real quick, I'll just, you know, my, my socials are basically, everything is I am Scott Page. So Instagram is I am Scott Page. Twitter is I am Scott Page. I am Scott Page. Uh, the, uh, uh, my, the website to go look at is thinkexp.co. Not .com, but .co think exp.co and you can see a little bit of our immersive shows and get an idea of what that's about it's a really simple network uh site uh but yeah people contact me hit me up um uh i'm like pretty 
pretty easy to get a hold of on those sites. So if somebody wants to chat, just DM me and uh, we'll go from there. As far as where I'm going to be in the next three to five years, uh, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to know that I'm, I, all I care about is what I'm doing right this moment. That part will figure itself out. That is fantastic. <laughs> and, of course, you know, you don't need AI for that. And I just want to say, <laughs> Scott, you've been very fantastic, and thank you very much. I think I'm going to go play some Pink Floyd in total right now. And uh, look, looking forward to having you on again soon. And uh, just keep us up to date to what's uh, going on as well, too. Love to have you back right. on. Sure, Mike. Anytime. Give me a buzz back anytime, brother, and I'll come on and uh, we can take any of these subjects, go deep. I'm happy to have that conversation. And I really appreciate you having me on the show. And thank you very much for uh, helping me plug Think Experience. <laughs> appreciate it. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the Mike Wagner Show.